age comes for us all. This is the story of House Dane, to whom I was born, first son of my father. It has been 17 years since the Battle of the Den, though I remember it like it was yesterday and the death of King Eris. Killed by the Kingslayer in King's Landing as we fought for that madman amongst the hills of Claw Point. House Dane has recovered, though none so far have been worthy to wield Dawn. Ulrich has proven himself no help or excuse for an heir. Ariana is the only child of my son Ulrich and has turned out to be far more capable than her father nor anything I could have expected. There are no other children to bear the name Dane. She will one day rule if that is the case. With the marriage of her to Darius Martell, the son of my liege's brother Obrin, I can feel in my bones that my time is coming soon enough. But before that, there is still so much to be done. This is the third part of a House Dane roleplay Game of Thrones series. All right, we need to get her into our government. She's young, she's only 16, but she's clearly very capable. We're getting older. We we love our son, but we know he has problems and is not the most confident. Actually, can we even put her in positions given she's a woman? We cannot, but we can put Darius Sands somewhere. We'll put him in place instead of our son. That's how you get murdered in actual Game of Thrones, so let's hope that doesn't go badly. But we're honest and trusting, so we'd assume that our son wouldn't take that personally. The mistress for the Citadel has arrived in Starfield. A sand Dornish by the name of Manfred. Let's hope he will be loyal and wise. Capable. Ah, he's lazy. Lazy, compassionate, and calm. He's a good but lazy man. To celebrate his arrival and the marriage of our granddaughter, we will host a feast in Starfield for our lords and friends of the fam. A drunken stumble. Oh, god damn it. Ariane and launched an enormous cauldron hanging over the fireplace in the middle of the feasting hall. Please tell me we aren't going to get an alcoholic granddaughter. She's fucking pregnant. Girl, what are you doing? Sir Broth welled forth to cover half the room in a sea of stew. The irritable Ulrich, seated next to the cauldron, was caught by the rushing wave and loudly cursed his ruined appearance as grease ran down his face. Giving in to his insatiable hunger, Master Morse collapsed on the floor, swallowing as much as he could. That's fucking gross, dude. Well, that's a shit show of a feast. Getting a shit faced while pregnant. God damn it, he had a son. Right when we didn't want him to, our fucking son. You know what he did? He. He got so pissed off at his daughter, and he got so pissed off at us for making fucking Darius Sand our, our marshal. He literally, like, hate-fucked his wife to get an heir. Like, Jesus Christ, that's so spiteful. He hasn't had sex with his wife since they got married, but he did just to fuck with us and our granddaughter. What an asshole. Fuck you, Ulrich. You piece of shit son. We have a grandson. We're not gonna name him Edgar. We're gonna name him Arthur. And we'll give him a martial education. Hook Scorpion for sale. As I'm shopping in a bazaar, I come across a new merchant I have not seen there before. He's a sandy Dornishman, and his common tongue is thick with a red mountain's drawl. He spots me and waves me over. I quickly see he is another food merchant, but his waves are peculiar. He's selling cooked scorpions. He has baskets and baskets of the creatures, and is roasting them on the fire next to his stand. He even has some spices ready to use. What? She died in childbirth. Oh no, fuck. That actually makes me sad, god damn. Her child died too. She was such a fucking good granddaughter, man. God damn. Well, I guess it's a good thing we had a grandson then after all. Arthur Dane. Spymaster's come to me with great news. Well, we do not know yet who. Someone's planning to kill my daughter-in-law, Almodis. In his sadness, and in his, in his sorrow for his granddaughter, Someone he loved more than even Arthur, his squire, and his son, Ulfric. Though him, uh, his granddaughter, and her child died in childbirth. With the inheritance of Torain and the fields of glass back into his family. In his sorrow, Lord Beric grants his granddaughter's widowed husband, Darius Sand, the titles of the field of glass. To honor the memory of Ariana. We'll keep him as our marshal. We, we became very close with him. He really likes us, we really like him. I mean, we're probably good friends at this point, so. Bonding over the death of our of our family member. Let's take a pilgrimage too. We're grieving. We'll go all the way to the Eerie. We're gonna take a very long trip, spend all our money. I wake to the noise of chaos in camp. It only takes me a few moments to realize what is happening. We are under attack. And it's our swarming our tents and wagons while our guards do what they can to resist. Where's the goddamn sword? We fended them off. I could have sworn that this was supposed to be the path onwards. 
None of my companions or I have managed to find our way back to the pilgrimage route. Are we even looking at the right stars at night? Feels as if we have been wasting weeks away. We'll find a guide. We have the coin. We brought it with us. Possibly as it may be. I am finally here, body and soul at the Great Sept of the Eerie. As the Septon offers me blessings, I reflect on everything that's happened to me for the seven who are one to bring me here at this moment in time. My spy master is coming to me with grave news. It is my son Ulrich that is plotting to kill his wife. Fucking Ulrich. What would we do here? This is a tough call. We love our son, even if he is an asshole. But we're an honorable and a just man. There's only one thing we can do. We, we are returning home to Starfall when we hear news from our Stymaster who has met us on the King's Road to tell us of this. And as we arrive there in front of our whole court, we publicly denounce our son and banish him from court. Ulrich has managed to avoid capture and has fled to the countryside. He went to the Reach. Oh. Murdering your wife is one thing. But working with Marcher Lords, that we cannot forgive. We will never allow him back into our court. To the old hills at that, old rivals of our family. Oh, such an act against our house. I started on my court, proud of my bold new fashion forward statement. My usual headdress cocks to one side of my head, rings something new and fresh to an otherwise old and drab item of clothing. What are you wearing? My wife nearly really cries out from across the hall. <laughs> we throw insults back and forth, myself defending what is so obviously good fashion. Far above the head of a simple mind. <laughs> Our fucking life. As the local nobility flock around me, I can consider my fashion statement to be a roaring success. Listen, all our hat needed is a slight tilt, and it looks way better. You know, we may be old, but we got fucking style. Though nobles have been gathered from across the realm and presented before you. After careful consideration, the court has come to the consensus that the most qualified to join your court would be among Uros K and Felix Volatar, a rude gregarious, compassionate gray eminence, someone who could be of use to our grandson. We would value a sound mind more, so we'll take Felix Volatar and we'll make him our squire. If he becomes close to the family, he'll make for a good person to take care of our grandson. Let's see what he's made of. Pick up your sword, lad. Let's see what you've got. We're in our training section. Felix could not grasp the techniques I was demonstrating. They struggled with other drills as well. As expected. Naturally not a, a good fighter. You're not good with a sword. Curly. But you have a strong mind. Let's, let's see if you take to strategy. We were never one for it, but maybe he will be. During our session, Felix showed a thorough understanding of the material I was teaching. I was very pleased. Yeah, sharp mind. He'd be a paradox gamer. He'd, he'd definitely play Hearts of Iron right now. Does he have sadistic? I don't think he does. He'd definitely play EU4. Let's test him in horsemanship. We'll go riding with him. He demonstrated a good bond of his horse. Good. Another squire who, who can't use a sword to save his life, but he's talented in other things, perhaps. He's rude, but he is compassionate. Let's see if he, he has good moral standing. Excellent chivalrous behavior. I'm walking the gardens with some of the lords at court when I notice my guest Bronda approaching. Uh, I step aside to let her pass, but to my surprise, she blocks my path and kneels before me. Before I have time to probably process the turn of events, Bronda begins to sing. I quickly recognize the tune. It is a famous Stone Dornish love ballad. I've heard it performed countless times, but never with such skill and passion. The intense emotions of the song are mirrored in Bronda's gaze, which is set on me. She does not look away for a single heartbeat. Damn. Gotta respect the, the gall. We're just, we're honorable. We hate our bitch wife, but we will not be disloyal. He'd make a good court smith. Man, he is a talented kid, isn't he? God damn. We'll make Felix into our court smith. He's very capable. Thought I was gonna have to work to make Felix like me, but he has turned out to be the friendliest person I know. Felix has told me that there is always room by his hearth for a new acquaintance. He is our squire, so. Kind of weird if he he wasn't friendly with us. I should uh, be able to help along my attempt to befriend Felix by presenting him with a gift. We'll give him a modest one. He's not from a great family, so we'll get him a sword or something like that. After laborious preparations, I was finally able to spend some time alone with Felix, but by the time I left, it felt as though we had known each other for a lifetime, and we befriended him. Good. Strategy. Yeah, good lad. He'll make a very capable. He, if he's, if he's good enough, we actually may make him a, the tutor for our grandson when he gets older. Mm. Arthur's not going as well as I would like. Is there a more capable guardian than us? 
He's not in our court. He was with his father. Fuck that. Honestly, Felix. We'll get we'll get Felix to tutor him a little bit too. All right, Felix of House Fluxstone. He was so from no noble distinction. As our squire, we have given him a proper name that suits him and his family. Felix of Fluxstone. My granddaughter, Lady Rolla, has been quarreling with her grandmother, Lady Narella, for days. Just how I hear over here them arguing in the next room over. Unbelievable. How good a bamfoot like you believe? You are the ideal manifestation of Dane family virtues. I'm clearly far more deserving of that distinction than you are. So our wife is angry at our granddaughter. She's um she's the daughter of Ashara Dane who we married to the heir of Valyrian. Oh, he died. Monfred Valyrian is uh, yeah, he's not alive anymore. He got cancer. She had three daughters and a son who died. Three fucking Targaryen daughters. All of them are beautiful. <laughs> what the fuck? We'll let them sort that out. We're wise enough at our age to know not to get involved with things like that. And then Stannis died. Stannis died uh, at one of the battles in the Civil War. I actually didn't realize that. He does. <laughs> Sir Victor Lannister. An ugly, disloyal, lustful, robust uh, son of Tyrion. All right. Well, wait till we have the gold. We're going to recruit Devin Trowbridge, and then we're going to make him... The tutor for our young son Arthur. We need him to become a good fighter. Devin is well known to be a skilled fighter, an aspiring good blade master, and a capable tactician. Everything we'd look for. Brave, authoritative. It's the kind of man we'd want to raise our, our grandson. Oh shit, our brother died! Lord Alistar, 65 years old. Damn. I don't think our Lord Beric wasn't incredibly close with him, but they were, you know, he was on the council. They have a long history together. Once I've divided the world, my son and heir Ulrich will rule my stead. Unfortunately, rumors of Ulrich having been spread around my court, it makes me wonder if he will manage to retain my vassal support when I am gone. Strategy. Good. And we can knight Felix. Wonderful. I think we've been training him for five years now. We've had him as a squire for a long time. And we're going to formally knight him. Sir Felix of Fluxstone. I'm going to try and grant him a holding too if we get an extra one. Lord Ryan Illyrian of God's Grace has become our rival. Illyrian rivalry. I am told Rion, the contemptible ogre, has vowed to Dane to become eternal enemies of his family. That was our son's wife. Our son is married to, I think, his sister? Yeah. His sister is married to our son. You know what it is? That fucking blackguard piece of shit son of ours has been stirring up shit with House Illyrian. That's what this is. Apparently, our son ran off of his son, but we're gonna get him back. And we will place him under the tutelage of Devin Trowbridge. Good, capable knight. We're gonna go ahead and knight him, too. We can't have our son trained by just anyone. In a dusty corner of the library, I find a tome, bound in leather and inscribed with weird symbols, partially hidden behind the other books. It is old, but it has obviously seen some recent use. As I leaf through it, I quickly come to the realization that it deals with some unconventional knowledge. We're not religious. So, let's see what's in the book. Death is in the book, apparently. God damn. A great man has died. Lord Beric. Loyal to the Mad King. Clapped in irons by Robert. Suffering much tragedy in his life. He ruled justly and honorably in the Starfall. One of the best fighters of his time, he was unrivaled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ulrich will not ascend the throne. I'm gonna do a save at it, and I'm gonna have him, like, uh, disinherit, so Arthur is gonna be our, our lord when he come back. Arthur is routing opinionated at nine, and he will not allow his father back, so Ulrich will not inherit. 